Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're taking a look at how to do a USB BAS flashback without having to have a CPU installed on the NZXT N5Z690 motherboard. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video we're taking a look at how to do a USB flashback on the NZXT N5Z690 motherboard. Now this motherboard at the moment, if you haven't seen it already, has been reduced drastically in price, especially for those of us in the UK, potentially around the world as well. I'll try and put some links in the video description if you're potentially interested in picking up what appears to be possibly the cheapest Z690 motherboard that there is at all. The one thing that this doesn't do out of the box is support 13th gen Intel processors. And um, being that the fact that we have here the Intel i5-13500 processor, which is pretty much perfect to go with this motherboard in terms of pricing and where it is actually in the market, I figured now would be a great time to try an NZXT motherboard as I've not used one before and see how it all goes. So the first thing to do is we're gonna to need to flash the BOSS to update it so it's ready for this new CPU. Now in order to do that, there's some things you are gonna need. You're gonna need a PC which you can connect to the internet to download the BOSS files. You're also gonna need a USB drive that you can format to FAT32, so ideally 32 gigabytes or less. Potentially you can use larger drives. We have done a video on how to actually create a smaller logical partition on a USB drive should you need to. I'll try and link that in the video description below also, just in case you do need to do that for larger drives. In my experience, I would say that doesn't always work as well, but of course, as with all things, your mileage may vary. Something else you're gonna need is a power supply. Obviously, if you're building a PC, chance are you gonna have one. You only need to connect the 24 pin main power connector. So you don't have to worry about connecting up too many of your wires on your modular power supply, should you be doing this. And I would say as well, get something to actually put the motherboard on whilst you're flashing. There's gonna be probably some of you that have got this already installed in your case, everything connected up, and then you're gonna do your bars flash. Now, in my personal opinion, and also my experience, Generally, it's better to do the motherboard first before you do your build. That way, if for some reason the boss flash doesn't take or something goes wrong, board doesn't power up, etc., etc., you've limited what is actually the influence and characteristics. So if it's installed and you've got everything connected up, you could potentially have a motherboard pillar in the wrong position, that kind of stuff. So it's those kind of fault finding things which you don't really have to do if you've just got this on a motherboard box or on a table or some kind of anti-static surface. So anyway, with that said, let's head over to the computer and we'll do the software side of it, get the BOSS, get the BOSS file configured, and then at the end, we'll go through and do the actual BOSS flash itself. Okay, so here we are. This is the website for this particular board. Well, actually, this is for all their motherboards. And as you can see, actually, crazy value at the moment. It was originally £209, which was a little bit expensive for what it is. Now reduced down to 99.99, so absolutely uh, stellar bargain in comparison with other motherboards, even some of the older gen. Anyway, I'm digressing. You don't want to know that. You want to know how to flash your boss. So here is the, uh, the board itself. And I'm pretty sure if we go down here, yes, yeah, scroll down and you can find your resources. So this is where we're going to find our software and support. So you can get things like your CPU support list to see which CPUs are actually supported. Uh, ironically, the CPU which I'm trying to use actually isn't on the support list, but I have been reliably informed by somebody on UK Hilt Deals that the 13500 does work indeed on this board and they have got it set up. So uh, we'll take them at face value on that one. So what we'll do is go down, we've obviously got drivers, etc. there. And at the bottom here, we've got our BOSS update. So this is the latest BOSS update. That is the very latest one. So that is the N5 Z690 BOSS update 11.01. So let's click on that one and we'll download this. We'll download this to our Windows desktop. Click save, that shouldn't take very long at all. So then we can minimize this window. And what we wanna do now is to actually format our USB drive. So I'm gonna plug that in. And there is a BIOS on here already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna format this drive just to make sure that it's in the right format. So FAT32, yep, yeah, that's what we want. The allocation size you can set to default. And if there's anything in the volume label, I would suggest removing that and also have quick format enabled. If there's anything on the device or drive that you actually need to keep, clearly it's gonna erase it. So if you need to keep it, just move it off of the drive temporarily. Once you're happy, click on start you'll get a message saying warning, the formatting is gonna erase all data. And do you want to continue? So we're gonna click yes or okay. 
and there we go format is complete so we've got our blank drive now that is awesome so let's head over back over this is our downloaded bars file we're going to right click on it and we're going to choose extract all because it is a compressed folder and then we've got the rom file you can see there are 16 1384 kilobytes or 16 megs and there's the release notes telling you about the actual version so what you need to do is you actually need to rename the bars file so make sure that you've got file extensions visible which you can do by going to properties etc and just click on it and then we can delete everything that's there and we need to rename it to something a little bit different we're used to doing msi.rom etc this is creative.rom uh, it doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase but it has to be creative.rom once you're happy press enter and because it was already a rom file it doesn't say that you're uh, changing the kind of type or then it's just uh, going to do that so that's absolutely fine so we can right click on there we're going to copy the file and we're going to go to our usb drive right click and choose paste ideally you just want one file on the drive to make life easier so that is it pretty simple pretty straightforward so now we can close this down remove our USB drive and go over to our platform. So now we've got our USB drive with the BAS file on there, creative.rom, we're ready to rock and roll. So let's get our power supply hooked up. So we're gonna apply some power to the power supply and make sure it's in the off position. And then with our 24 pin connector, we're gonna plug that into the motherboard in this section here. So that's where your 24 pin connector goes. So let's get that connected up straight away. And now the easy part, slightly nerve wracking, but here we go. So we're gonna put the drive into the BAS port, which is labeled clearly there. So there's a, a white rectangle around the outside of the port. So we're gonna plug it into that port there. And you can see just a little bit across from there, there is our BAS flashback button. Next to the BAS flashback button, there's actually a very small little gap. And that is where there's an LED. So basically what we wanna do is turn on the power supply then we're going to press and hold the flash button for about three seconds just do the count of three the usb should start flashing or the light should start flashing and it should take a few minutes to flash the bios when it is completely done the system will shut down in its entirety and the lights will go out etc etc so potentially you might see the fan spinning on your power supply depending on the model this one is pretty good so it's got like a zero fan thing so potentially it won't do but you probably hear it click on and off so let's get on and do that so first of all we're going to turn on the power supply which we've done so that's switched on now and there's no rgb on the board itself so we don't really know it's active but we'll go ahead and press the button anyway so press and hold for the count of three so one two three Okay, so now the BIOS is flashing, and you can see there is a steady flash on the BIOS light. If for some reason when you're doing this, you may find it useful if your USB drive just stops, or you get a solid green light, then you may need to make sure that your disk drive is actually converted to the MBR format, rather than being GPT. Now you can do that in a relatively simple way, using the disk part command. There will be a link in the video description for how to convert your drive to MBR from GPT if that's causing a problem. So yeah, if you've got to this point and you've got a solid green LED, then uh, click on the video in the video description and then you should be able to continue from there. Okay, and it would appear that the LED has now gone off. So that took about two minutes to flash, which sounds about right for a 16 megabyte flash. Normally if it's a 32 megabyte flash, they take somewhere between four to six minutes depending on the motherboard. So now you can shut down the PC and install your new processor. Okay, so there you go. There is how to flash the BIOS on your NZXT N5Z690 or even some of the AMD boards. Then again, obviously just changing out the BIOS file for the appropriate one for your motherboard. And like I said, if you're getting to a point where you plug in your drive, you press the flash button and you just get a solid green LED, that means that your flash drive or whatever drive you're using is in the GPT format, which is very common these days. Uh, it does need to be MBR. And again, there is gonna be a video link to this one showing you how to go through, do that, and actually convert a drive from GPT back to MBR so you can successfully flash your BIOS. 
So anyway, I think that's going to wrap this one up. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and hopefully it's been useful. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, hit the subscribe button and the chime icon if you know it's of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.